have a shift in the way we approach the psychotherapies for people who are experiencing suicidality. Traditionally, we were looking at reducing the symptom severity or we're looking at targeting those psychological ill health symptoms. So treating depression, for example, or treating somebody's anxiety and hoping that the symptoms of depression reduction means that somebody's not going to be suicidal. What we need to be doing is treating the suicidality first and working towards the symptom reduction of their other experiences or their psychosocial needs after that um, or concurrently but most importantly we need to be working to treat the suicidality first. As per the research by Mirwick in 2016 where they did a meta-analysis of the psychotherapies and did an evaluation of the suicide specific outcomes that research was really important in that it looked at suicide direct psychotherapies. The outcome of that meta-analysis was that in the immediate and short term the direct suicide specific psychotherapies were better at preventing suicide related outcomes while the non-direct or indirect psychotherapies uh, were better in the longer term. This means that we should be using our direct psychotherapies in the short to moderate term but supported with other psychotherapies. When it was less structured um, and more just about me and my experience and my story and really trying to understand um, what I'd gone through and how, you know, what had been coming up for me. That was where I, I felt that I, you know, built rapport and then was actually able to, to share some of the, the real things that were underneath that I'd never really connected with before. Evidence-based care that treats suicidality directly has gone through some rigorous research and that's usually the randomised control trials. And there are only um, a handful of psychotherapies that have done that with collaborative assessment and management of suicidality being one of them. And the CAMS model essentially looks at, is a framework for understanding somebody's uh, risk and how to support addressing their psychosocial needs that are um, impacting on their, their suicide. Uh, or suicidality. In looking at CAMS, they, CAMS advocates for the use of a suicide status form and in using that suicide status form the client is essentially describing the factors that are driving or underpinning their desire to take their own life. And then the intervention around that is how do we address or how do we mitigate those drivers to support them finding the life that's worth living. Another evidence-based intervention is dialectical behaviour therapy and that's one of the uh, cognitive behavioural therapies and that is looking at aspects including emotional regulation. So dialectical behaviour therapy that was first um, brought from Marsha Linehan's work with um, particularly personality but can now be um, very strongly aligned with suicide prevention across any diagnostic um, process. So cognitive behavioural therapy that's suicide prevention specific is specifically looking at the suicide cognitions or thoughts and the behaviours and looking at how we are able to use that information to develop a plan that the person has the capacity to put in place to prevent suicide. When we look to engage a client or a, pe a person in treatment specific to suicidality, the first and, and most important thing that we bring into the room is the compassion, empathy and a desire to understand what's happening for a person. You know, the process was handled in a way that, um, you know, cared for um, or catered for how vulnerable I was at that point in time. Like if a human being has just tried to take their own life, um, anything you say to them needs to be said with a lot of care and empathy and gently and probably not too much at one time. You know, I'm just so lucky that the care that I got was, um, was so gentle. Um, so the experience was, was really positive. When we look at particular strategies that support engagement, there are a few things that we are able to look at. And first is our interview technique and the way in which we are present in a room and how we work with somebody. And that we are collaborating with them to understand what their needs are and how they might come through this. In doing that, we are supporting um, ongoing contact through caring contacts and there might be postcards or phone calls and follow-ups and supporting them to be able to seek help or contact us as needed. You know, I'm not going to call my mate who has no idea what's going on 
when if I encounter another crisis point, you know, I'm only, you're only really going to call people that might already know. Um, it just makes sense. When we look at pathways for care for somebody who's experiencing suicidality, we are looking to have a consistent framework in which we might be uh, referring to policies and protocols and also adherence to certain models of care and that includes the way in which we interview or the way in which we triage a person through or the way in which we undertake an assessment. There's been emerging um, research and uh, push, I guess, community push for treatment approaches outside of hospital settings and particularly outside of emergency settings. When we look towards things like non-hospital based care models, which are more um, in a setting that's a house, a supportive um, accommodation type setting where individuals are not under the scrutiny of a medical based model that hospital is typically catering for. In those settings we know that people are far more comfortable, they're less likely to have escalations due to the medical approach and they've they're more likely to feel supported in their recovery in those models. We're looking at a shift from very harsh lighting and very structured um, medical focus care. We're looking at a model which has uh, normal house lighting, the normal lounges, a comfortable um, setting. Somebody can make a cup of tea when they want to make a cup of tea. They can play music and play um, board games. They are, have the ability to, to exercise and they have a, a more free approach to um, how they live their life in the process of um, transitioning out of that suicidal crisis. And that model has been advocated because of its um, shift towards a person-centred uh, approach to recovery.